Don't get scared. Don't get wild. Don't get crazy. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is Talking Wax, your new playlist, Artist Rewind, where you will find your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And tonight we have Steve Whiteman of the band Kicks coming on the show. He's going to talk about his new solo record. You're welcome. If you do enjoy tonight's episode, follow us on Patreon. You'll get the ultimate VIP backstage pass that'll unlock unedited content. Right behind me, we're giving away vinyl. The first Saturday of each month, you could join up to our vinyl showdown. You bring your vinyl on the show and the audience will vote for which vinyl they like best. And you'll take home something great behind, like something over here. All right, everybody. Tonight, we have from the rock and roll band, Steve Whiteman of Kicks. Kicks is one of my all-time favorite bands. Well, Steve just put out a new record called You're Welcome. We're going to sit down, chat with him, laugh with him, and discuss what's going on with Kicks, what's going on with him, all this and much, much more. But before we go there, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, like it, share it, tell people you know Adika. Now, kids, let's get ready to rock and roll. Roll it! Talking wax. Steve, I'm so happy and honored you're here. You you are one of the the, the finest, greatest front men. And for the ah. kids out there that are following, and and if you don't know Steve, you're under a rock. This guy has been rocking for a long time. Big influence on me. You. I have to say this to you. You made me buy a white leather motorcycle jacket because you used to have an ad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? There was an ad in Circus Magazine, magazine in the back, and it was a black and white picture. All, all of you guys, Ramon style, but then you had the white leather jacket. And I go, yeah. I go, that's cool. It took me so long to find one, but Steve, I found one, and you're my inspiration. Right. That's it. <laughs> well, welcome. We'll go right into You're welcome. That's your new record. Out. yeah tell us tell us about a little about this it's it started out as pretty much a jam session with jimmy jimmy chocolate and brad divins who 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 had a studio in his in his home and jimmy suggested uh me coming over with a batch of songs that i've that i've had and had been working on just to give brad some experience in his studio so we started uh to listen to all the tracks and brad looked at me and said let's record all of them so I said, well, okay, I guess I'm making a solo record then, aren't I? He said, yeah, I think you are. So we worked on it for a couple of months with Jimmy doing the drums, and I got to play a couple of drum tracks. Brad did most of the bass. I got to play a couple. Of, I wanted to play something on every song. So I, I got to play guitar. I got to play bass. I got to play drums, the, all the harmonica and all the vocals. So it was a, it was, it was a lot of fun, and it, it broke up the COVID monotony. You know, It gave us something to do, and, and we really enjoyed it. So you one of those guys that play you play everything? I didn't know that. Yeah. I know your harmonica, you're badass on the hum on the harp. That's you know, without but I play. started out as a drummer. That's that's what I did. When I joined oh, really? Kicks, who was then the shoes, I was I was the drummer slash front man. So when our other drummer uh just got out of control, they threw me out front and we brought Jimmy in and I, I I've been out there ever since. But I've been wow. playing guitar since I was twelve. I've been playing uh, saxophone or monica. I'm just one of those kind of guys. I'll pick something up and I'll play it. Wow. What, okay. The, what the what was the bug that got you into rock and roll? And what was the first thing? Because people say the Beatles. El what was it yeah. for you? The Beatles. The Beatles. Ed Sullivan. Yep. Ed Sullivan. I was oh. seven years old when I when I saw them, and I that's what I'm going to do. Wow. And from then on, that's I was just in. I, it was a passion. You, you, still but, you know, even even be, even before the Beatles, I was always yeah. in love with the drums. I used to get my mom's pots and pans out with spoons and and play all the pots and pans. And I used to love watching the, the marching band, the drum corps play. Yeah. So I was always in love with the drums. But when I saw the Beatles, that's when it hit me. OK, that's you can actually do something with music and drums. Yeah, yeah, they really did it writing their own songs because really before that a lot of people were doing eh, covers or other songwriters, but yeah. they came out like a splash, like boom. Now you guys, like in the beginning, the shoes was it was it a cover band in the beginning? Yeah, it was yeah. a cover. Um, what lured me into them was Donnie Purnell when he came up to to uh, see me play with my band up in Cumberland, Maryland. He come up and uh, we took a break and he took me out to his little Volkswagen Beetle. 
and play me four originals. It was Atomic Bombs, The Kid, Contrary Mary, and another one. And yeah. he said, we're going to get a record deal. And he just convinced me that, that, that I would be making a big mistake if I didn't join him. And, and I joined him, and, and it was the best thing I ever did. It, 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 you know what? So, so on, the, on those tracks, who was singing the demos on that when he played it? I guess he was. I guess was. Donnie I, was. I can yeah. never picture another voice. There's a frontman out there that you can't replace, and you're one of them. The, the voice, the tone, it's like, I mean, I'm shocked right now hearing that you were a drummer because if you guys go out to a kick show, and I'm going to say this right now, you influenced a lot of people before, because I would follow you guys. There was the rock and roll. You were one of the first bands out there. It's like in that 80s scene. Yeah. Everybody was getting metal. You were so rock and roll with, with the swagger, the strut. You had everything umbrella you break out the umbrella <laughs> it was i so, still do <laughs> oh it's so cool it's so cool what my favorite favorite and i, I remember i actually remember the bass that donnie used to play the les paul yep the, the yep. les paul bass which i ended up buying one at chelsea guitars and it was like piano wood it was so heavy i don't know how the hell he moved around back then i know the heaviest thing in the world so now it's interesting so you got brad divins working on this record which on cool kids he was the guitar player on that album yeah the album with for shame wow yeah that was that was when ronnie for the first time took a turn for the worst and mm -hmm. uh, we had to we had to replace him before we went down to make our second album mm -hmm. and then he got he got well again and and we we got him back in and and brad was such a, a sport about it and he jumped right into another band and 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 you know did great and it was really cool to reconnect with brad doing this record because he's a great guy and um we had a lot of fun and we reconnected as friends. So, you know, lifelong friends again. He, yeah. He's a fabulous musician too. Cause he had the band yeah. rap child. Then they switched to rap yep. child to America, America. And I remember the, the band because they had Shannon on drums, had the black and white yeah. at the time. I mean, yeah. great band. And, he, and then he, he went on and later did another band with a total different sound. Yeah. He, he yeah. Up, he's know, a very so. versatile guy. Now he runs front of house for Enrique Iglesias. That's what he does. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. wild. So during yeah. during this whole lockdown, COVID, it, it just last year, it was the beginning of, I guess, our new the way we're living, because who knows how this world I was talking to friends about this. Like, is this the new norm now? We got to get used to it. You know what I mean? Um, yep. And to keep rock and roll and to keep the edge on these live shows and the meet and greets and all this. Now you go out, you know, I'm paranoid. I'm, I'm this hypochondriac. It's like, oh man, I can't sit next to this person. Or do you look I get the, it. You know, you look on the audience, yeah. they're not wearing masks. You know, yeah, what, I get you know it. it's tough. And it, it takes the fun out of rock and roll. What is the recipe to keep the fun in there for you, Steve? Well, we're all vaccinated yeah. and, and, and I preach it, you know, the only reason we're able to be here tonight is because there is a vaccination and I really encourage everybody to, to take it. Um, and I've had people walk out and want their money back because I'm, you know, I'm telling people that, that I think it's really important that we all get vaccinated mm -hmm. and people who, who are offended by it, you know, they're just some people that won't do it and yeah. they're the ones that's holding everything up. So yeah. we, we just, we keep our distance. We won't do meet and greets anymore. Um, yeah. We keep our distance backstage um, traveling. You know, you, you have to get on a plane, you have to wear a mask, but um, I'm not that worried about it because I am vaccinated. And, and if yeah. I do get it, I don't think it'll be that bad. You take you take some vitamins. You, are you big on oh, the vitamin C's? Yeah. And you take care. Of, you're yeah. in great shape, so you have a formula. You know, you could tell you you work. You got to do a good workout plan as well. Huh? I just got done working out. What is workout plan? What is your plan? I'm you doing doing P90X, which is a it, it's a it's a video exercise program that I've been yeah. doing for probably 12, 13 years now, and it's just it it addresses different parts of the body. Every day you do a different part. Today was legs and back, so. A lot of lunges and a lot of oh. lot of pull ups. Oh, legs are huh? the worst. I can't. I hate yeah, that. I hate it. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Ryan on Foresight, he's another one. Like he's been on the show. He does his workout. He's on his yep. crate now. What about that? His diet. I know it's this crazy diet that he does. He swears by the what? <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> it's crazy. He's like all oh, this meat. We call him. We call him the meat man. <laughs> He all he does is eat meat. Oh, he just eats chunks of meat. <laughs> chunks of meat. What are you? What's your diet now? What do you got? Going I on? I don't eat crap. I don't eat fast foods. Um, I, I you know I I don't deprive myself of foods that I love. But I I try to avoid sugars and breads and anything that causes right. inflammation. And yeah. um, I have a a wife who a wonderful cook. So she's all she takes care of me. So I That's eat cool. right. You eat right. Yeah. Huh? 
And that's the tip of rock and roll. You can find a wife who's a wonderful cook who'll take care of you. That's that's a there good one, go. right there. So, the yeah. album you got, you did it during COVID. You had you had all these songs written before. Were these songs just laying around, not for kicks, or you know what's? I for? I was just writing songs. I wasn't really writing for kicks. I was just writing, and um, you know I thought if and when the time comes that kicks does do another record, I'll throw these into the hat and and pull out whichever ones you want to use, and mm -hmm. uh, it just it just didn't seem like there was much interest in doing a kicks album anytime soon. So that's when I took these songs up to Brad's and said, let's just record all these damn things and see what happens. And it really wasn't my intention to make a solo album, but when it was all said and done, it, we all looked at each other and go, this damn thing sounds good. So right. let's put it out. I, at first I was just going to do digital, but then um, I thought, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it right. And I, 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 I got hold of Madeline who, who takes care of kicks and, she she hooked me up with all the right people and she asked me, Do you have any idea for a for an album cover? And I said, Madeline, I only have one idea. And I and I took a piece of paper and I wrote Steve Whiteman, little stick man, and you're welcome. And I showed it to her. She said, I love it. <laughs> there it is. And right there, that's it. That's it. You're welcome. It took, it took, it took me two minutes to, to come up with an album cover. That's great. That's great. It's very, kind of a Klaus Vorman thing that you just did over there. You did your own <laughs> revolver, yeah. right? That's I mean, it, it, it's me. It, it shows my personality. And and the you're welcome bit is something that I've been doing at live shows for about the past seven or eight years. It's how I get the crowd involved. When I say thank you at the end of a song, I want the whole crowd to yell, you're welcome. So that just carries over from live shows. You guys taught how to, to work the crowd. And it's yeah. that's another thing besides great songs. You know, well, you when I would go watch a band, if, if the singer really wasn't engaging with the crowd, it turned me off. Yeah, I, I would watch people like uh, Peter Wolf, you know, who is just one of the best. Mick Jagger, one of the best. Mm -hmm. Mick doesn't engage with the audience very much, but he, he's so visual. So, you know, I lifted all these different influences from people like Peter Wolf and Mick Jagger and uh, Steven Tyler and all these all these people that influenced me. And I try to roll it all up into one a flaming asshole out there just having a good time with with all the fans you do a great job my friend so now with, th with this solo record um do you plan on doing any gigs right now you just want to just release it put it out there it's just more you know you feel right like now it's just, we're just going to put it out there um about the only opportunity that we would have to do anything with it is in january and february when brian goes to europe um he's, he's back with rhino bucket and they usually they usually tour once a year over there so that would be a window if everybody wanted to do it. But I'm, yeah. at this point, there's no plans. There's no plans right now. What about shows right now with everything's going on for kicks? Are you guys anything lined up? Right We're now? busy as hell. Now, now, now the tracks on the record, you wrote a, a beautiful, you did a song for Ronnie, a tribute over yeah. there. Right? Kid Dynamite. And that was really yep. sweet. And, um, you know, so that's that's a great one. Ronnie is a, actually favorite watch. He's a great friend of mine, and I wish him the best. And uh, yeah, one of the good guys. He really is. Yeah, good guys. Even Brian's a good guy. You got a great band there. You got, got a guys. great band. I, I, you know, we all still love each other. We all get along. We're we're best friends, and that makes it easy when you have people that you enjoy being around, and right. and we just laugh and and enjoy what we're doing. And even with Bob Perry coming in to fill in for Ronnie, it's another great guy that, that yeah. we're fortunate to have in the band right now. How do you how do you keep a marriage like that alive for so long? I mean, you guys have been around. Was it since 77, 78, The band. I joined them in seventy eight. They were yeah. they were around a year before I joined them. Um, you know what? I think the four of us, when when it was the original lineup and Donnie Purnell was was the band leader, he ran the band with such an iron fist that us four had to rally around each other just to be able to deal with the way he, he ran the band. So that really bonded us, us four. So when we disbanded in 95 and then put it back together in 2003 with Mark Shanker, you know, it's like, oh, this is way better. This is way more fun. Let's just keep it like this. And that's what we did. And yeah. uh, it's been great. Yeah. I, you know what? It's, it's the Donnie almost remind me of a little bit Johnny Ramone, like a drill such <laughs> a little bit. You know? he, he was, he was not easy to deal with. No. And, and on every level, I mean, management agents, uh, road crew guys, everybody that had to deal with him had to deal with his wrath. And, and yeah. it was, it was relentless. Me 
how we lasted 18 years with him is, is pretty incredible. Brian couldn't take it there at, towards the end and he bailed. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, that's a tough, that's a tough one too. Cause when you're doing, it's, it's not even the show you're out there doing your show for an hour and a half to two hours, but it's the traveling, it's the bond. Yeah. It's like, Hey, we're going to go eat. It's the hang. Yeah. You know, can't enjoy the hang. It's, it's exactly. Ruthless. It's, it's ruthless. exactly. I mean, you guys are warriors. You guys are out there playing gr- you know, great. Your songs are better and getting better and better as a band. It's never demolishing, going away, diminishing, whatever word I'm looking for. But it's just a fantastic. You know, I speak Brooklynese, so just go with me with this one. You know? <laughs> I I remember back when Trash and Vaudeville, and it was like a big thing, and everybody out there mm-hmm. watching. I, you know, is Stephen going to fanboy out? Yes, because a man deserves to be fanboyed out right now. I remember seeing you guys. Trash and Vaudeville, St. Mark's Walk-In, as a crew, as 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 a band. I go, this is so cool. Because some bands behind the scenes, they don't like each other. But you guys, I remember you guys are all walking. I, saw, I remember Ronnie. It was Brian. I saw you. And I go, wow. Ronnie had this fringe jacket. They're walking. They're shopping. Mm. This is where Kick shops. That's where I got to go. And I go, I bet he found the white jacket over here. <laughs> you still have that white jacket? That's what I want to no. know. You know what? I, I gave a lot of that stuff away to like to charities for, for fundraisers and things yeah. like that. Cause I knew I would never wear them again, but I, I thought it would, it would raise money if, you know, a good piece of artifact from the old kicks days. So I gave most of that stuff away. Yeah. Now, how, now you guys right now, are you going to add, do you ever think about adding any of your stuff? maybe a song from your solo record in the kick set or you know you're just going to keep it set i don't i think there's so many good songs yeah. that the kicks fans would want to hear that i don't know if they would want to hear any of my solo stuff yeah that was just that was for my benefit that was like yeah. a bucket list for me to uh to put out my whole my whole record i wrote everything i got to play yeah. on just about everything and so I, i'm just happy that i accomplished that and That's that cool. it's out there and the fans want to enjoy it, you know, by all means, enjoy it. You know what? It's out there and everybody go check it out. I mean, hey, you took good, you took at a time where people were like sitting there depressed, you, you made good time out of that time. You yeah. Know, that yeah. Direct, and for people who want the physical copy, it's available at, at Right Rock Sportswear. That's who handles all of our kicks merch. So it's, it's Right Rock Sportswear or it's available on iTunes and all that stuff. Too. Steve. I know you're busy and I don't want you to take up all your time. Was there ever that one moment where you met that, that per- one person in your life and go, wow, I can't believe I'm in the room with this, this artist or this, you know, you know, whatever it was. Many times, yeah. many, many times. I've got to meet a lot of people M- meeting Mark Farner was it's the only one and only autograph I ever got. Really? I, and I've met a lot of people. I met John Bellucci. I've met, I've met all these people because of, of being on Atlantic records and, and playing with, you know, playing with, Ted Nugent playing with White Snake, playing playing with all these great bands that we yeah. would open for. So I've got to meet a lot of people, but meeting Mark Farner and 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 I uh, the the Atlantic rep had just given me his solo album, so I had a copy on me and Mark signed it. And That's that pretty was cool. A, that was a thrill. Did you get a frame that record? You still have it framed? I still so, have it. You still have it. Yeah, John Belushi, huh? You got to meet. Yeah, Belushi. I met John Belushi at a club. Uh, he was he was MC in something uh, down in the, down in the village and. Uh, it was when the Blues Brothers were on Atlantic Records, so yeah. our Atlantic guy took us backstage and, and got to meet John. Okay. Are you Great. putting your out new solo record on vinyl? Is it going to be released on Yeah. Vinyl? Okay. Yeah, so- it's going to be available. Oh, that's cool. That's really Yeah, cool. it's going to be available. It, it's called The Head. It's in Hagerstown, Maryland. Mm-hmm. That uh, I'm not quite sure because if there's a backup, people were back ordering vinyl. It's, it's crazy how, how popular it's gotten. But it, it yes, fits. it's going to be out. It's it, it's big. The show that we're on right now, this is where you come, you play vinyl, and you win vinyl. So now I gotta get mm. one, I gotta get your solo record to put that in there because people we're just giving it away. This is the channel where you get a Jewish guy just giving you stuff. So Steve, if you ever want to come on and play, we'll do cassettes, whatever. This is where it is. We can't be beat. Our prices are insane. Steve Whiteman. <laughs> You're wonderful having you here, my friend. And you know what? Everybody in the audience, please check out his new music. It's out there. We'll put all the links down below. Catch Kicks playing wherever, but maybe by you. And everybody, I want you to check it out. Right here is his new record. It's his first ever solo album. So go buy it now. We'll see everybody later. Yeah. Goodbye. Until then, everybody, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. I'll see you Saturday, Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Until then, who loves you, baby? We do. Bam!
click over here and click over here for some other great episodes you maybe you might not have seen. And remember, subscribe and like it. We love you. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.